Hey there, I'm Josh Clark and welcome to Brain Stuff. And this is the Brain Stuff where I explain to you the difference between types of milk. It's actually interesting, so don't go anywhere yet. Have you ever been to the store and been like, hey, what's with all the colors among these different types of milk? Or have you been to the store and been like, mom, please buy the whole milk. It tastes so much better than skim. And she's like, no. And you're like, why? Well, I'm here to explain. See, all milk is generally uh, pretty much the same. It's 87% water, about eight and a quarter percent solids. That's your uh, protein, your carbohydrates, your vitamins, your minerals, all that kind of stuff. And then what you have left over typically is fat. And fat, as you may have guessed, the fat content is what explains the differences in those types of milk and hence the different colors of those kinds of milk on the little cap and everything. Now, whole milk, which is basically like squeezed from a cow, heated and then quickly cooled, aka pasteurized, and then sold to you to drink, and is delicious, has the most milk fat. According to, I believe, USDA standards, uh, it needs to have at least three and a quarter percent milk fat to be whole milk, right? That means that an eight ounce serving of whole milk has eight grams of fat, about 150 calories, half of which are fat calories. And in our fat psychosis gripped uh, Western culture, that's a lot of fat. So what do you do? Well, starting in the 60s and 70s, we turned to an age-old tradition of drinking skim milk, which had been long cast asunder in favor of whole milk because skim milk was viewed as something less desirable, but considerably more healthy, possibly. Let's get into this. You have uh, different kinds of milk fat content. You have your whole milk, like I said. You have your reduced fat milk, which is 2% which has 2% milk fat. You can see the pattern going here. And then we have low fat milk, which has 1% milk fat. And then of course we get to skim. And skim milk is called skim milk because whenever you remove fat from it, it's literally skimmed off the top of the milk. Since fat, AKA the cream, tends to rise to the top, making removing the fat and cream, the best part, frankly, if you ask me, very easy. And skim milk uh, has no fat whatsoever and it's about 90 calories, which means, boom, there you go. You wanna drink milk, but you wanna like lose some weight or stay in shape or whatever, drink skim milk. But the problem is, remember this, we said that milk is about 87% water, right? So when you remove all the fat entirely, you're removing a significant portion of what makes milk, milk. And you're actually removing the stuff that makes milk look and seem and feel like milk. Here's the thing. We've recently begun to realize that it's possible that milk fat and fats in general have been kind of unfairly kicked around the last several decades and might not be as bad for us as we once thought. A lot of studies, including some studies of older studies, have gone back and seen that there's not the expected correlation between fat intake and higher risk of cardiovascular disease. So what's going on here? Why is whole milk suddenly seeming a lot more attractive? Well, it turns out a lot of the vitamins found in milk, especially A and D, are fat soluble, which means that when they're ingested in the presence of fat, maybe even milk fat, I don't know, who knows, uh, your body absorbs them a lot more readily. And that's just one of many possible explanations. The point is whole milk uh, has been possibly unfairly, unjustly, and even unhealthily vilified for several decades. Now there are plenty of other considerations to take into account with milk besides just general healthfulness. You know, there's the whole lactose intolerance thing. Uh, there's uh, how dairy cattle are treated during their lives on factory farms. There's what they're fed. There's the use of growth hormones and antibiotics. Just, just buying, pouring, and drinking a glass of milk is almost like a political act and something that you should think about and do on your own. But can we all just get together and agree that whole milk definitely is the variety of milk that tastes best on cereals, especially Sim and Toast Crunch. If you like this video, YouTube is lousy with awesome brain stuff videos. Uh, you can subscribe, you can comment, you can like it. If you have a question you want us to answer, leave it somewhere below in this vast void. 